Welcome to Tech Brothers. In previous video, we learned how to install CentOS 7.5, uh, and we were able to log into our fresh installed CentOS 7.5. In this video, we're going to join that server with our existing domain. Keep in mind, my domain is Windows-based domain. So uh, currently, even though the network setting is done, and that was uh, because we needed to uh, get the internet access to download the packages um, for our installation of SQL Server or uh, other packages that would require to um, add this server into our domain. So steps we're going to take in this video. Number one, we will install required packages uh, using yum command. Uh, we'll in install the real MD package uh, and then we'll configure um, host file so that we can resolve the name of our domain. And then we will run the command to join the domain using um, a user that has authentication to create um, uh, objects in Active Directory and have credential to join any computer um, with that particular domain. Uh, verifying domain users from Linux uh, CentOS server, we will run some commands to verify that all the users in our existing um, domain uh, that has our computer has joined after that, that it can verify those users. Those are Active Directory users and we'll verify after, um, you know, joining to the domain. And then we will uh, um, look at some of the users' properties. Um, some of the users' properties means that if we look at um, user from the domain, it'll give us that, that user name, uh, what uh, groups it that particular user belong to. And one of the um, um, requirement for the for the user in order to look into the Active Directory is that you need to put that user fully qualified name like for example uh, Raza is the user in domain so I have to put Raza at my domain name dot com or domain name dot local so in order to avoid that uh, we we would uh, edit uh, SSSD dot config and we will disable that fully qualified name requirements. After that, we will use an Active Directory user. We'll pick Active Directory user and give the SODA rights onto this server and see how that works. So let's go. As you can see that uh, right here, um, this is TBS Linux node one. That's what we installed uh, in our previous video. So we're gonna click on KVM viewer to let me close this program and open it and connect with our Linux server. Since I'm controlling my physical machine remotely, I'm using this tool. Click on um, KVM Viewer. And this is the direct access um, to our um, existing CentOS 7.5. So if I wanted to look at um, whether everything is working, it works fine. Now, uh, there are certain steps that we need to take and run some commands. So let's start with one. Let me make it a little bigger and talk about a little bit. Um, number one, installing real MD package as we talked about in our steps. So we'll run this yum install SSD, this command, and then we'll edit the host file and then we'll resolve um, our domain and um, it should show our domain name and IP address. And then we'll go and join the domain using this command and see if everything works OK. And then we'll uh, look at the, the list and it should show us uh, everything uh, in the uh, all the properties of the of this server, uh, whether this server is part of the domain or not. Um, and then we'll look at the verification of the user. Keep in mind that if you notice right here, the cluster admin is the domain user that we're going to verify. Uh, and techbrothers.local is my domain name. And then, again, uh, fully qualified requirement. We need to turn those off. And we'll use a VI editor to edit this um, sssd.config file and then restart our uh, daemon. Um, then it should be, uh, we should be able to just use the uh, uh, username uh, instead of at techbrothers.local. And then we'll give the soda rice using this command. So let's use putty for this. I wanted to use the putty because uh, I can copy paste in, in using putty. So here is my um, TBS Linux node one. So I'll load that. 
and I'll log in as root user. Before we move further, I wanted to mention that if you try to use Putty and you get a timeout error, even though you put all the information that is, that is required to connect with the server, that means that your, um, your server may not have the, um, the network enabled. So if it's not enabled, you won't be able to connect it to the server uh, from the remote, and you won't be able to download any packages. So if you notice right here, right here is my uh, IFCFG, the first one, uh, dash ENP 0 S25 is my Ethernet. So we can go and look into um, this file. So the type is Ethernet and the proxy method is um, none. So the main thing that I wanted to show you is that if you go all the way down to where it says um, on boot, uh, usually if you don't uh, enable your Ethernet during the installation, uh, this would be no and your Ethernet won't be working. So you won't be able to connect to it. So you can go into this file and you can edit using VI editor and change this um, on boot is equal to yes from no. By default, it's no if you don't turn it on. But if you don't, if do if you turn it on from the when you're installing, then um, you know it would be put as yes. So let's go back to Putty. I just wanted to mention it because I forgot in my previous video that when you install, you can turn it on there, and that configuration will be saved in this one. I'm going to close this. Let's go back to Putty. And uh, this script, I will put it in our um, in my video description or on our website, techbrothersit.com. So you don't need to uh, worry about remembering this or looking at it uh, and typing it. So I'll just copy this. And you can modify the script as it fits to your environment. So I'm going to install this package. It's going to take just a minute or two. Anytime it asks you whether you want to do install or download, you need to click yes. And there are option, other options that you, when you run the script, you can put in dash Y in there and it won't ask you because it will consider that everything that you want to do is yes, it's already there. All right, it's completed. Let's see that if our real MD um, package is completed successfully. Right now, there is nothing in the list. So, but uh, the package completed successfully. Let's go and uh, edit our host file. As you can see right now, it has loopback. Um, IP address and what we need to do is 
add our domain controller IP address and and the server name. In my case, it's 192.168.1.32. And the server name is tbsdc.techbrothers.local. And I can put it as tbsdc so I can connect with this tbsdc. Save this file. And let's just take a look whether a change has happened. As you can see, that our um, server name is right there. Our next step is that we wanted to verify that whether um, our server resolves um, resolves to this domain controller. So let's see. As you can see, the search for techbrothers.local, that is my domain, and name server is 192.168.1.35. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and join this server to our actual domain. So we'll use realm join and then username dash dash user. In my case, it's cluster admin that has all the permission to join the server to allow any server to be joined with the Tech Brothers um, uh, domain and tbsdc.techbrothers.local is my server where my domain controller is. So let's click enter and provide the password. Okay, it's successfully joined. Let's verify. Now, if we look at the VLM list, it should show us the properties. So techbrothers.local type Kerberos, and as you can see that everything we can see in our list. So our next target is to verify whether we can verify just the, the um, Active Directory users. So the command is ID and then the username. If I do just cluster admin, it's going to say no, no such user exists. So because it still has the fully qualified name enabled, we have to provide fully qualified name. OK, now it gave us all the properties of this user. So our next target is let's um, disable the fully qualified name requirement. So we're going to edit this file sssd.config see use fully qualified name is equal to true we're gonna make it false Save the file. Just take a look again if that has. Taken place, I just like to verify. Yes, it's false. And now if we do ID tech brothers, no plus admin. And I have not provided a fully qualified name, it should give us all the properties. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to restart, the, we have to reload the daemon. We'll restart the SSSD and reload the daemon. Now it should work for us. There you go. So, now we can verify any Active Directory users. Uh, let's go and add um, Active Directory user to either Sodo or admin. Uh, this command that I'm using, this works uh, for CentOS. Uh, there are multiple ways to, to do this, but uh, this is easier way I found. 
uh, on CentOS 7.5 and also or 7.6. Um, but um, on other um, flavors, it might be different command, uh, but it'll be similar. So if I do this, so the cluster admin is uh, added into the SOTO. So let's open a new session and log in as Active Directory user. So we'll use this same command and add another user right here to see that um, if everything is working, that it has SOTO permission. Provide the password. And now it was able to use the SOTO command. So this is basically it for this video. Our next video is going to be installing SQL Server since we already joined the server to our existing domain. We will install our SQL Server. Um, and um, then after that, we will uh, verify our installation, uh, whether it works uh, using uh, SQL Server authentication. And then we will add the, um, the Active Directory integration with the SQL Server as well, Windows authentication, that is. I hope it helps. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.